Hi, I'm Christine Benz for Morningstar. Many investors are familiar with alpha and beta, but Morningstar researchers have created a new measure called gamma. Joining me to discuss it is David Blanchett. He is head of retirement research for Morningstar. David, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. David, you've written a paper about gamma. Let's talk about what the measure is. Uh, well, first, you, know, you mentioned alpha and beta. Okay, alpha is if you pick a good mutual fund, it beats its peers by one percent. That's alpha. Um, beta is, you know, I'm going to put 60% of my money in stocks, 40% in bonds. Beta is kind of how much you invest in the market. Um, and then gamma is kind of the benefit of making good financial planning decisions. So it's kind of, um, it's all that alpha and beta is not. It's, it's the value you achieve from, from making intelligent choices about how to manage your money. So you looked at the value that one might add by successfully managing gamma. How impactful can that be in terms of uh, a portfolio's overall results? We found it was we, we found it was significant. Um, you know, in this research paper, we, we look at five different things, and um, there's probably more like 19 different things. And we found you know that you can create 29 percent more income. Uh, in re for a retiree by just kind of doing these, these gamma optimized things. Okay, so that's a big number. Yeah. Let's start with um, one of the first components that you looked at. You called it total wealth allocation. I want to talk about how that's different from the traditional understanding of asset allocation. Okay, so um, total wealth allocation is the idea that you should think about how all your investments fit in a total portfolio. So for example, if you have a portfolio that's half stocks and half bonds, you go out and buy an immediate fixed annuity. Okay, that creates very bond-like income. And so, you know, with, with, with the rest of your money, you can be more aggressive. You know, kind of think about, you know, how all of your components are creating income or, you know, how they add value, and then look at that from a holistic perspective. And you've got human capital in the mix as well. That's a consideration. Yeah, so like for a very young investor, human capital, which is their, it's their future earnings, is their most valuable asset. And so as they move through their life expectancy at a lifetime, um, that kind of gets smaller and smaller, and their financial capital gets larger and larger. And so as those kind of offset, it should affect your asset allocation. Same thing in retirement. Um, you know, the, the different components of your income should drive what you invest in. Another component of gamma is what you call dynamic withdrawal strategy. How does that differ from someone using, say, the 4% rule for uh, taking withdrawals from their retirement portfolio? You know, the 4% the rule is an excellent starting place for a couple who's age 65. Uh, it doesn't work for someone who is, who's a male who's age 80, a female who's 70, a, a male who's age 50, a couple who's 50 years old. Um, and so the 4% rule gives you a starting place. Um, the idea behind the dynamic withdrawal strategy is to update that every year. So once a year, you know, go in and look at, hey, how's my portfolio done? Um, how long am I going to live? What is, what is a smart withdrawal rate given those two things? So if the market has done relatively poorly, you'd want to ratchet your withdrawal rate down a little bit. If it's done better, maybe you could take a little more. That's right. Okay. So another thing that you looked at is an investor's annuity allocation. I think a lot of investors hear the word annuity and their hackles go up. Yeah. They've been taught that annuities can be really costly. But your research shows that looking at annuities as a potential component of a toolkit can, can be very additive. Yeah. I mean, annuities, I guess they're a dirty word in some circles. I don't know. But if you want to guarantee lifetime income, um, you can't do that with a portfolio without an annuity. I mean, annuity, you know, it, it's where you hedge risk. And, you know, I've seen papers that talk about, you know, you have a low chance of failure if you invest this way or you buy this thing. The only you can guarantee income for life is through an annuity. And so uh, they don't work for everyone. I mean, most people actually have a great annuity through Social Security. Um, Social Security is a phenomenal um, investment for most people because it guarantees income for life increased by inflation. So, you know, for most folks, they have Social Security, but for those that want more guaranteed income, they have to look at an annuity. Okay. Another thing that you looked at as part of Gamma is proper tax management. So you're really looking at two things there. I want to start with the first thing. That's asset location. So what types of investments you put in what types of accounts. What are some general rules of thumb you can share on that topic? Okay. So um, bonds are very inefficient investments because bonds, you realize the gain, you realize the income every year as ordinary income. So right now, let's tax, tax it up to 35%. And so stocks, on the other hand, are taxed if, they, if they're held over a year at long-term capital gains, which is only 15%. So if you, have, if you have inefficient investments like bonds, you should hold them in a, in a tax-deferred account, like an IRA or a 401k. You should hold your stocks 
in a like a taxable account to kind of realize the benefits of the taxation between the two different types of accounts. Paying attention to what goes where, and also you note that sequencing withdrawals mm -hmm. when it comes time to take distributions from various accounts, um, paying attention to which accounts you tap first and which you save to last is important. What are some considerations that people should be thinking about there? So it, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, you want to you, you want to keep the most efficient accounts you have. And so, you know, a Roth IRA is a very efficient account. You know, there's no RMDs at all. Um, it's got very good estate planning um, benefits. And so, you know, if you have a taxable account, a traditional 401k and a Roth IRA, spend the Roth IRA last. You know, those, those taxable monies are, are good, but, you know, every year that you have, you have money in that tax plan, you're paying taxes based upon gains and things. And so thinking about, you know, using that Roth piece last or the traditional piece last will create more income because you have more assets. And the taxable piece would go first. First, yeah. I mean, I mean, you want to have some diversification. I wouldn't recommend that you spend down all of your taxable mm -hmm. account. Um, but it's good to kind of think about what is the most efficient way to kind of invest money. And that's usually kind of in a, in a Roth or traditional type account. Okay. And the last thing um, that, that you looked at as a component of ga gamma is having inflation protection or, or mitigating inflation yeah. risk in the portfolio. How should investors think about that specific question? Well, and, and this goes back to the early thing we talked about with, with human capital. And so with human capital, for someone that's young, you know, as if, if inflation's material, their wages should increase with inflation. It should have kind of offset things. Well, a retiree, the risk of their portfolio is creating income for life adjusted by inflation. And so you want a, a portfolio that moves with inflation. So if inflation's high, your portfolio returns well. If it's low, you'd still like to do well, but the goal is income. And so you want to have a portfolio that kind of tracks inflation to create income that better matches your need over time. Do you have a thought on what sorts of tools that someone might add to add a measure of inflation protection to their portfolio? Uh, things like uh, TIPS, which are Treasury Inflated Protected Securities, um, real estate, domestic equities. Um, things that kind of move with inflation are, are great hedges against inflation, I guess. Okay. Well, David, thank you so much for providing an overview of the paper. People who want to learn more can read the entire paper, but thanks for providing a little bit of a shorthand on, on the research that you've done. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. I'm Christine Benz for Morningstar.